Hi there, welcome, welcome to Homekeepers. Come right on in, my friends, grab a cup of tea. You don't wanna miss one minute of this program, I promise you that. And I'll tell you a little bit more about it later, but um, this program to me is so special, I just started taking things out of it so we could give the guests more time. I don't think I've ever done that before, but we're going to talk about the most important subject it's really a requirement in scriptures that needs a lot more emphasis on it from our pulpits and everywhere else. Uh, before I tell you about it, though, I want to offer you Faith Goals. This is by my friend uh, Dave Williams. He's been uh, on the program before. You might remember him. He wrote the book, uh, Hope in the Last Days. And when I looked at this, I thought, that is a great title because you know what? If you aim at nothing, you will hit it every single time. You need some specific goals. And when you have a goal, soak it in faith. That's going to make a big difference. And you know what? Dave gave me these books, and so I'm going to offer them to any amount that you want to give the program that you, you can determine. You can determine your gift on this one. And if you use a credit card, it's 1-800-229-0059, or that address on your screen is box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758. And perhaps you've been kind of living under expectations for a long time. Uh, define your goals and then add some faith to it. And we'll be looking for your letter or for your phone call this week. Now, the guest I have today, he's evangelist Craig Stone and has written this book, Forgiving the Unforgivable. And as I went through it, it dawned on me how many Christians' lives are stopped, they're stuck, they're stunted because of lack of forgiveness. And yet, as far as Jesus is concerned, it's a requirement. This is one of the most powerful stories of forgiveness that you'll ever hear about, that you'll ever read about. My guest is evangelist Craig Stone. But before he joins me, let me give you just a little taste of what we're going to be talking about. Watch this. Sorry, Pastor, but Matthew has lost all brain activity. that Reverend Craig and I are pursuing every lead that we possibly can to get to the truth of what happened that terrible night. Well, sir, what about some of the other... I want you to tell them. You were there. You saw it. I need your help. I can't. I can't. You know he was drunk. You just... Hold on! You need to testify. I would lose my job. How are we supposed to live with this, let alone forgive him? I mean, I'm supposed to be a pastor, and I hate him. I hate him. I know, honey. But we need to focus on our own broken family right now. I can't. I can't. Not while he's out there just living life like nothing's wrong. He, he deserved to die. He, he deserved to die, and someone needs to punish him. But isn't it true, Mr. So, that it was, in fact, your car that crossed the center line and not my client. No, that is a complete lie and he knows it. You didn't see him today at the courthouse. David and I were in the bathroom and he walks in. He, he looks me right in the eyes. And no remorse. None whatsoever. No, I, I want him to die. I want him to die. I hope he dies in jail cell. On account of murder in the second degree, how do you find the defendant? 
not guilty. On the count of intoxication and manslaughter, how do you find the defendant? Not guilty. On the count of reckless endangerment, how do you find the defendant? Not guilty. This is ridiculous. He's guilty and you know it. 70 times 7. Turn the other cheek. Love thy neighbor. None of that makes sense right now. He took everything from me, and God allowed it. This is a test from God? Okay, I've got a test for him. If God wants me to forgive, all he has to do is stop me. Well, I want to tell you it's a real privilege to welcome to the program evangelist Craig Stone, who wrote Forgiving the Unforgivable. And just that one section of this movie that is still in the process of being made, it uh, gave me goosebumps and an adrenaline rush, and I pray that the Lord will really use it. How Thank did, you. How did, how did the movie come about? Well, uh, actually, the producer read my book and uh, Arthleen and called me about a week later and said, uh, you had me at the fourth page. And he mm -hmm. said, I would like to make a movie. And I'm like, a movie? We just got the book published and just getting it out now. And so one thing led to another. And then uh, so I agreed that, uh, yeah, that's I believe as long as we can reach people, as long as we can reach souls and let's do it. So that's kind of how that started. And uh, and then we have the first trailer that made a few months ago. So we're proud. Well, let me tell you, if the entire movie is as, is as captivating as that, yeah. I think it's going to be a real tool in the hands of the Holy Spirit to. Thank so you. I want to ask Thank the you. viewers, uh, let's put this on your prayer list because I think your story applies to everybody who's at the age of accountability, my, maybe not a toddler, but, um, but all the rest of us, and that maybe it's not preached enough or something, but I think there's a great lack of understanding in the body of Christ, how pivotal, pivotal this is. And so then this is the reason, as I said, people are stuck and they're not moving anywhere and they kind of don't know why. So you know what? I would like you to just tell us your story. Just if you want to talk to the camera, whatever, uh, just give us a, just a bird's eye view of this book. Yeah, let me do that. You know, uh, Arthur, it was, I was in a crusade coming back one night, had five generations of my family. We were all having a wonderful time and uh, it was just a, a good time to be with family and we were in two different cars. We had left the restaurant, headed back home and uh, at about 12:15 that night, uh, I noticed a car kind of swaying, uh, moving back and forth and uh, in the curve coming toward me. And I said to my wife, this car is going to hit us. And I turned the wheel as hard as I could. And he hit me left of center at a high rate of speed, threw me into a ditch and I rested against a telephone pole. Now I was headed right at that pole to hit it at a high rate. And I had my foot on the brake as hard as I could. And it was, I believe it was the Lord. I know it was the Lord that just kind of slowed that car down and we rested against that telephone pole. But my wife knew, the mother instinct in her knew that something was wrong in the second car, because you gotta remember my family, my mom, my dad, my grandmother, grandmother, and step-grandfather, and my oldest son were in the second car. They were following us, and I thought they were far back, but they were actually closer than I realized. And she realized something was wrong when she got out of the car, she began to run. And I began to run after her and said, Janet, where are you going? She knew something was not right. And back in the field was uh, my father's car. We got there. We were shocked when we looked in. It was my family. And um, my son actually was so far in the dash, we couldn't even find him. We didn't know if he'd gone out the windshield. We couldn't find him. And, you know, uh, make a long story short, the jaws of life, they came in. The helicopters came in. They lit the place up like a, a football field. And they began to cut the car apart, really, to get them out. And later we lost my father, lost my grandmother, she died, my great-grandmother died, and my son, they told us, uh, as you saw in the movie trailer, uh, he um, would be brain damaged the rest of his life. And so it was a very tough time in our life. Uh, now you were heading for this light post or whatever. Yeah. How did this other car get involved? The other car, my yeah, with dad's your family. car. Yeah, he was following us. They had been to the crusade and he was following me. And uh, so he was actually closer than I thought. I was going to flag him down and say, Dad, you know, we're okay. We're fine. And uh, so, but the, what happened was when the drunk driver hit me, he kind of ricocheted back and hit my dad full That's impact, head on. 
and pushed him back into the field. That car, I wish I had a picture to show you today, but it was like an accordion. It was destroyed. And uh, of course, my family was in that car. And you were, you lost three family members. Yes. Just like that. Yes, uh, three family members. And then, you know, they told us that my son, Matthew, would, would never have any, his brain activity was gone. So we would, we, I mean, he'd be like a vegetable. And I remember in the hospital when, when the uh, doctor told us that, Arthur, Jan and I began to say, no, in the name of Jesus, it's powerful what you speak. And we need to always be careful and be aware that we speak the word of God. And we begin to speak the word and say, he shall live and not die. He was in a coma for three days. Uh, and the doctors were really concerned that he'd never come out of it. But on the third day, that's interesting. Praise God. On the third day, uh, he woke up at 2 o'clock in the morning. I like to tell it like this. Uh -huh. Somebody walked into that critical ward on that third day, and they touched our boy. And he opened his eyes, and he looked at the nurse and said, I'm hungry. And he's never looked back. And a year later, the doctors released him and said, there's nothing wrong with his brain. He's completely whole. And today, he's 36 years old, has five children, lives in Charlotte, Praise North God. Carolina, and there's nothing wrong with his brain. Wow. That's a miracle. I, I, I will agree with you. I will agree with you. So, so who did you lose your... My father, mm -hmm. my grandmother, mm -hmm. and my great-grandmother. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, almost, almost lost your son. Almost lost Matthew. Now, would this be a true statement that when, when the dust settled, you maybe didn't realize it, but you were in a real spiritual crisis? Oh, absolutely. I, you know... A year later, the man that killed my family got off completely free, freed. And that was very difficult for us, for me and for my entire family. I think family. that was just the understatement of the year. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, very, he killed yeah. them. Yeah, uh, Scott Ford. Which Yes, and then to be exonerated, mm -hmm. that's insult to injury. Isn't so, it? yes, ma'am. And being a speaker, being an evangelist, traveling all over, I continued to do that because that's what I did for a living. Uh, but I was empty. I mean, I'd go and preach, go back to the hotel. Jan will tell you, Janet will tell you that it was just, I was an empty shell. I was hurting so bad. I became bitter. Uh, I was very unforgiving. I, I was holding all this bitterness on the inside of me. And, you know, I'd been taught about forgiveness, but now I really had to practice it. And, and to be very honest, I wanted to hurt him. And uh, Yeah, did you, did you realize that, that you were supposed to forgive or did you think, well, these, these are natural feelings? Well, I knew I was supposed to f forgive, but I was having a hard time dealing with all the hurt and the anger and the guilt because you got to remember, I didn't mention this at the very beginning, but I told my dad, we're going to take a shortcut tonight. And it was the shortcut that killed my yeah, family. I remember so I had reading, to deal with reading that the book. Guilt yeah, too, so you, you were know. taking some of the blame. I was. What's it like to sit in a courtroom which has its own special atmosphere, no matter? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> intimidating, kind mm -hmm. of. Um, and to have. It was a jury trial? Yes, ma'am. To have the jury come and exonerate a drunk driver mm -hmm. who killed three members of your family. And you know, lawyers, good lawyers will twist the facts. They'll create doubt, a little bit of doubt. Or lie, maybe? Try to, yeah, tr try to blame it on, they tried to blame it on me that I crossed the center line, which that didn't happen. And, and later the reconstruction has proved that. And so they bring back a not guilty verdict. That's how it's done. It was very difficult for all of us uh, to handle. And so the Lord began to deal with me. I went through a, a, a depression. I went through times of actual suicide. I talk about it in the mm -hmm. book. And, and that's why I believe it's helping so many people is because I think people read the book and they think, well, uh, if God can bring Craig and his family through this, God can bring me through what I'm going through. And, and not to say that I've gone through the worst thing in the world. That's not what I'm trying to say. It but would the, be pretty high up on the Yeah, it's pretty high. But the Lord began to deal with me, Arthurine, about I cannot take you any further in your life and ministry until you get past this. And that's where, you know, I really had to get down to business and begin to deal with it. And it was years. You know, it, it, it shouldn't take that long, but it took me years. Now, probably at least five. Yeah, I can kind of understand, though, really. If you've just joined me, I'm talking to evangelist Craig Stone, who's written a book, Forgiving the Unforgivable. Let me tell you, it would really strengthen your Christian life if you would get it. We've got the website up on the screen. You can get it through that. I'm sure those other places, Absolutely. Amazon and Barnes and, Noble. Barnes and Noble and all, Forgiving the Unforgivable. And if you saw the first part of the program, you saw some... Uh, just a trailer of the movie that's coming out that 
just kind of going to stop you in your tracks just seeing that much of it. So, um, what is the name of the movie? Forgiving the Forgiving Unforgivable. The unforgivable. Same as okay. The, yes, ma'am. Okay. Okay, so now you've gone through this and it was great injustice. Three people are dead that meant a lot to you. They're trying to blame you for it. And now you're... <laughs> I've been an evangelist, let me tell you. You're trying to go right, right. <laughs> from church to church with victory. I mean, evangelist has to have victory. Yes, ma'am, absolutely. We've got to stay charged all the time. And, <laughs> and the problem is, uh, Arthelene, is I wanted revenge, you know, and that's the dangers of unforgiveness. Mm -hmm. You know, when people are wrong, they immediately want to get revenge. And you know what the Bible says, vengeance is mine, mm -hmm. saith the Lord. But I wanted to take it into my hands, and, and later the movie's going to bear that out, how I tried to do that. And when we fall into that unforgiveness and that bitterness because we've been wounded, you see. That's why we fall into that trap. And bitter people usually will live empty and lonely lives. And I didn't want to live like that. It was affecting not only me because the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 12 that it will defile many. So it was not only affecting me, it was affecting my family, my wife, my children, everybody around us. And I was just not the person anymore that I had been. And mm -hmm. so God began to deal with me and I had to learn what I had been taught all my life. He says, Jesus said, if we don't forgive, yes. then we can't be forgiven. It was very, very hard for me. And I, like I said, I've been taught it all my life, but it was very difficult. The Bible actually says that we are, we are to pursue peace with everybody, with all people. And we're, even a drunk driver. Yeah, and, and even and Jesus was a forgiver, and also he was a forgetter. And sometimes now tragic things are very difficult when people say to me, Craig, you know, you forgive and forget. I say, no, you don't really forget the tragic, the difficult things. Now the little stuff we can forget, mm -hmm. but we're talking about I the things forget. that are high. You don't forget those things. You know, it's been twenty some years, and it's like it happened yesterday. Mm -hmm. But God helped me forgive, and one night as it bears out in the movie. I was going to hurt him. I don't know if I'd have kill, killed him, Arthelene, but I was going to hurt him. And I had a gun in my car, and the Lord began to deal with me. And he began to... Was there a moment before that that uh, it, it just dawned on you, hey, my problem is unforgiveness. I mean, you could, you could blame it on just the natural emotions that would follow mm -hmm. a tragedy like that. Mm -hmm. But I think the Holy Spirit has to put his finger on it and say, this is really, was there a moment like oh, that? Oh, yes. He, he, he was going to put me on the shelf. Mm -hmm. And I had to realize, really, this, this is really a key point here. I had to forgive him to set me free because I was all messed up and I was all chained up and I was all bound. And, and, but when I found, when I really began to forgive, and it was a process. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to say that it happened just like that. Now, it can but it didn't happen like that Usually for me. Usually doesn't. Not the big thing. Yeah. The, the thing about forgiveness is it, it draws people now not away from you, but it draws people to you. Forgiveness strengthens you, okay? And it brings healing. And I needed healing in my mind. My mind was all messed up because mm -hmm. I, I could see this thing happening every day of my life, like a recording. Mm -hmm. I just said, Lord, please stop it. You know, I could just see it over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. And the Lord began to heal my mind. And that's so important that people that are watching right now, if you're dealing with bitterness, if you're dealing with unforgiveness, to give it to God, let it go. Because forgiveness is the, really the way we let go and just say, Lord, I let it go. I'm not going to keep harboring mm -hmm. this thing. I'm not going to keep allowing this thing because what it's doing is keeping you from laying hold of what God ha has for you in the future. So I had to learn that, and the Lord began to teach me that, and then He began to deal with me about writing a book about forgiveness, mm -hmm. and so I began to delve into that. I didn't want to do it at first. I really wrestled with it, but the Lord just kept dealing with me uh, about talking about forgiveness, and one thing I found, and you'll understand this being a, a preacher, uh, an evangelist, is that I was losing the anointing because I had all this bitterness in my life, right. I was losing it. I really was. And even though I was preaching, the word won't return void. We know that. But I was right, losing right. the anointing. But what happens is when you begin to operate in forgiveness and when you begin to release forgiveness, when Jesus was hanging on the cross and he released forgiveness, the anointing touched everything from that moment on. And so my point is mm -hmm. when you begin to forgive people, the anointing touches you, it touches your home, it touches your children, it touches Amen. your family. Everything is now touched by the anointing. Mm -hmm. And when I think about it, sometimes I think, well, Arthelene, he forgave you. Right. 
<laughs> right. That was a big one. That's a big one. And sometimes, Arthur, I think it's like I've heard people say, well, Craig, I could forgive him if he would just half cripple him. You know, but that's not the way God works. And that, that's just, I never thought that's, of that that's one. just not forgiveness because if, if people hurt you, don't hurt them back. Pray for them. Yes, and forgiveness is it's for me. Uh, it's a release. It's right. not necessarily for the other that's, person. It's for the other person. Because that other person's probably sleeping just fine. Absolutely. And I'm the one that's awake. And I'm up all night worried about it and thinking about it. But I learned something, Arthur, I learned something else about the pain that we've all been broken. Everybody's been broken. And if I not, learned you some, will be. <laughs> yeah, I've learned something about the pain. Don't waste your pain and use your pain to help others. And that's kind of why I wrote the book, because I wanted to use what God allowed us to go through to help others and touch others. I, I wonder... Uh, I always say everything descends from the pulpit eventually. And I think uh, when we see the church going a certain way, let's look and see what's coming from the pulpit. Right, right. And um, maybe this is not preached thoroughly enough because we kind of say it in the Lord's Prayer, mm -hmm. kind of just wrote, and uh, it doesn't register with us, you know, forgive us. It's, right. And uh, I wonder if those in the church pew know how serious it is for the fulfillment of their own lives. Absolutely. In fact, my pastor uh, tells me, don't ever quit preaching this message of forgiveness because uh, really the whole gospel spins around mm -hmm. two words, but one of those words is forgiveness. And so for the last two and a half, three years, that's what I've been doing. We've been traveling across the country, taking the book, and preaching the message of forgiveness. And what is amazing to me and humbling to me, because I'm the zero without him, mm -hmm. but seeing the people's lives, the hundreds of people that are changed and people that we don't even know about that have either heard the message or read this book or, uh, and their lives have been changed. I've had people write our office and say, my life has been completely changed and I'm so humble. But it, it just shows me that God can use our pain mm -hmm. to help others and that's a, Powerful Boy, thing. I do not doubt that. Say, if you just join me, I'm talking to evangelist uh, Craig Stone. There's a movie out on this book, Forgiving the Unforgivable. Uh, we have no idea yet for sh when it will be Not finished. yet. Don't have a timeline on that. We're still working. But what I was thinking to my precious viewers, um, forgiving that adult that abused you. And right now, I, I was just looking at the Drudge Report on the computer. The Oh, this awful thing in the Catholic Church, and I'm I'm certainly not indicting every Catholic, but boy, this right. is bad. Right, it is. And and we have these adult men and some women that were hurt when they were so young, and they're they're still walking around with that. Like Dr. Phil says, when that happens to a child, it change, changes who they are. And. But forgiveness speaks to that too, doesn't it? Absolutely. If you're an adult and you were hurt, it's time to release it and let it go. Absolutely. And I, what I found, and you know this, Arthelene, but hurting people hurt people. Yes, they do. A lot of them are sitting in prison today. Absolutely. And I found this also that in my darkest time, in my challenge, in my world, in my, my faith was challenged. And, mm -hmm. and life is faith. It's all about faith in God. Because I want to tell you, I wouldn't have made it. Uh, not that I have arrived, I don't mean to imply that, but I would never have made it to this point had I not had faith in God and the Lord right. and, and, and a great wife mm -hmm. because uh, behind every successful minister, mm -hmm. there's a surprised wife. So, uh, <laughs> But really, it, it was our faith was challenged in those darkest times. And uh, so, I, you know, I, I, I decided I'm going to forgive him. I will forgive him. I must forgive him. And God helped me to forgive him. And the Lord began to help me. And, and then the emotions follow that. Yes. Forgiveness, I believe, is something you determine to do. And you do it, you do it from your heart, and then you begin to walk it out. And you might take two steps forward and one back. I did, many did times, yes. many times. You know, if you just joined us, I, I hope that you get that website and, and get the book and watch for the movie that will be coming out. We don't know for sure when. We have uh, seen just a little bit of it. It's, it's absolutely compelling. Uh, forgiving the Unforgivable. And uh, you can get the book through that website. But also, I hope what we've had to say is just going to uh, find a place in your life and your heart because I know I've <laughs> turned on TV sometimes and heard a conversation like this. 
oh, that's, you know, that's me. Right. And I think people are walking around with all this hurt and irritation and, and, and they're not getting along with people and they don't know why. Yeah. And this could very well be it. It's like a lady who's had an abortion. She didn't know it was wrong or anything when she did it. It comes around later to bite her. Absolutely. So um, we've only got a couple minutes. What about forgiving yourself? Well, that's, that's, and you a tough two minutes. That, that's a tough one. Uh, I, I couldn't forgive myself for a long time. And I think the only way, and this may sound simple, but the only way that I was able to forgive myself is to get into the Word of God and let God speak through me through His Spirit because we've got to understand the Word is powerful. And uh, I used to say something every day. There was a say, I still say it, but not every day, I have to admit. But back then, I said it every day. I will not be defeated because I will not quit. Mm -hmm. uh, and I just, I said, Lord, you know, I can't forgive myself. It's just it's impossible. I would sit for a long time and, and, and think about it, and I just couldn't. But the Spirit of the Lord, the more I would read the Word of God, I knew that God was working and He was helping me and, 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 and through the Word, He's speaking to me about that it wasn't my fault. Mm. It happened, it happened. And God helped me. And so to tell people out there to forgive themselves, you got to get to the Word of God. You yeah, got to let it go. There's something else there. Uh -huh. And that is when uh, we don't forgive ourselves, we're saying we're kind of special. Yeah. That the cross isn't enough. Right. right. That You're right. We, That's a good point. We need the cross plus right. Right. something else because right. our sin is so special. I got news for you, friend. It's not that special. Right. And the cross is enough for you. Absolutely. Just as the cross is enough for this drunken driver that killed your family, and the cross is enough for the most heinous sinner that's walking this earth today, I've got good news for you. The cross is enough for you. Absolutely. Accept it. Settle it. Right. It was for everyone, every sin. Your sin isn't that special, really. Boy, I want to thank you for coming by. Thank you. It's Anytime great to be you're here. in the area, thank you. Stop Always and see good us. To be here. Will you? Thank you so much. Yeah, because um, this is a subject that needs to be revisited quite often. And boy, friends, I'm so glad that you could be with us today. I sense very much that thousands of people were affected by what my guest had to say today, and. As we go off the air, why don't you determine just to reflect a little bit and say, am I holding unforgiveness? Because God's waiting for you to bring it to Him. Join me next time, please, remembering there's no higher calling than that of a homekeeper. God bless you. If you should miss a homekeeper's program, you can catch up by going to www.ctnonline.com. Click on CTN Programs and then on Homekeepers. 